At Butterwick Children's Hospice, there's a wall. Not just any old wall. This is extremely special. It's covered with photographs. Behind each one, a story of love and tenderness. Stories with tears of grief, tears of pride, and tears of thanks. These faces are quite simply what the hospice is all about. Although some of these children are no longer with us, there is a surprise in store. There is laughter, colour and joy at the hospice. It's as though the reason these young people are here has been suspended in a bubble of care, because for them, every moment does count. The Children's Hospice cares for between 75 and 80 children a year. Primarily we provide planned respite care for the families, but also inevitably some crisis care, some emergency care, and on a regular basis, three or four times a year, sadly some terminal care for the young people we care for. Some children that come in that use the unit do have cancer. Um, other children um, have different genetic conditions, um, cerebral palsy, um, different neuromuscular conditions. Um, there's a vast range of vast age range as well of children that use the service from, from birth right up to 19. The hospice takes patients from Teesside, County Durham, North Yorkshire and Wearside. The Shotton family are from Catterick. Denise and Eric adopted Adam, who's 17, and Jacob, who's eight, when they were babies. The Butterwick's an absolute lifeline for us. It's the only place that our boys can go to together where they can be brothers and they are really well cared for. It's a happy, safe environment that we can walk away from and we don't have to worry about them. There's nothing like it. It's absolutely the only thing that we have in life. If we didn't have butter, we'd have nothing. This is our, <laughs> it's our life, isn't it? Our, yeah, it's our, our saving life grace. They look on this as an absolute holiday. I mean, they get so excited. You know, as we're turning into the road to come here, they're jumping about in the car, you know, and they know they're coming here, and they absolutely adore coming. Children are encouraged to play and enjoy themselves at hospice, and yes, that includes karaoke. Fifteen-year-old Helen Carter has been a patient here since 2002. It's a nice rest, a break, a chance to recharge your batteries. When she's back again, we start all over again. But she comes back having enjoyed herself. She does, she comes back, yes, she's been recharged as well. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it is, it's excellent. Well, the best bit is when the public go on trips, like... Yep. One year we went to Kielder with some other people from the Butterwick and it was fantastic. Butterwick Children's Hospice provides support to the entire family, including patients' brothers and sisters. We help brothers and sisters um, of the children that come to our hospice um, to give them the opportunity to meet each other so that you can talk about any issues that they may have um, and realise they're not alone and it gives them the opportunity as well to ask maybe questions that they wouldn't ask the parents about their brother or sister's condition and it may be the fact that they're a bit frightened of asking them because it's going to upset them so they can ask us um, and hopefully we can help them and put them on the right track. We've had a lovely day at Centre Parks, a couple of days just at the local bowling to do bowling with them and recently we've taken them to Flamingo Land which they all thoroughly enjoyed. The parents can't um, spend a lot of quality time with them like we would with our children. Um, and I think this is it, why we want to make it their own day so that they can choose because there's maybe places that they can't go, the family haven't got time to take them. As well as helping the, the brothers and sisters um, with the sibling support, um, we try to involve the whole family in the care of the child really so um, we offer 
different forms of family support, counselling for the parents, um, complementary therapies which the parents can access, grandparents, aunties, uncles, anybody who's important to the family unit really. Um, we'll have the, the, the flat upstairs where if the families, if they find it hard to leave the child, which most do, um, it's a big step for them, they can come and stay um, for as long as they want. They can stay for the week that the child's in or they can stay for the first couple of nights. Another service that we offer is the, the sunflower room, um, which is a special bedroom which the, the parents can use for the child after the child's died. Um, it's, it's a nice relaxing room where the parents can come and spend time with the child um, before the funeral just to, to say goodbye. Of course, memories of children have value beyond measure for grieving parents. That's where Marie Peverley's work is so important. The kiss prints, we, we just put some lipstick on and we uh, get a piece of card, black card or white card, and just get them to kiss it and then we laminate it. And again, sometimes we give them to the parents, you know, whenever they want them or we'll keep them. We can then put a little bag together or a box together and we can put something in, several things in of, of that child. And they're special memories. It's always a kiss that they can have on their child, makes them feel close. The footprints are really precious, or the handprints, but if the child's passed away, to give them something like this is so, well, it's so lifelike and it's, you know, something that they can touch or they can keep um, in a memory box or some of them might put them in a frame. And when you just see the parent's face when you give them it and they touch it, and I think it's, because it's so lifelike, it's, it's really precious to them. Baby Leah Lloyd lost her fight for life in the Butterwick. Mum Nicola and Nana Sylvia are visiting with healthy handfuls Harry and Alicia. For them, these are happier days. We weren't sure what it would be like when we first come. What the hospice was about, we were never heard of it before, never knew what. But they were so lovely and so caring and they helped us with what we were going through. It was like home from home for her. For the month we were here, it was like home from home, wasn't it, for all of us, you know. And what about that, that awful time when, when Leah passed away and she was no longer with us? How did the hospice help you then? Uh, they kept in touch, they rang us, make sure we were all right. It wasn't an awful time, it was, <clears throat> they prepared us for it in one way, because they like, let us all, like, make a booklet for the actual funeral itself assured us where we we sure where she would go when she did pass away. So they sort of prepared us for not a bigger shock as it was gonna be. We had the choice of a hospice or a hospital. Um, if we didn't have the choice of a hospice we'd have been put into a hospital in a separate room to the children's ward and just it had been very clinical and hard and hospitals are not the nicest of places. Anyway, but I think that would have been really hard if we weren't able to have come here. The support needed by bereaved families is immeasurable. The support provided by the hospice is invaluable. This is our multi-sensory room and this is where families and children can come to relax. Um, we can hold aromatherapy sessions here um, or we can hold play therapy sessions here which involves our nursery nurses and also the rest of the care team members. Although the NHS contributes £200,000 a year, all this care and support costs a great deal of money. But what would life be like without public support? Steph Wood is one of three children's hospice fundraisers. I don't think we would survive, to be quite honest. Um, we have to raise nearly £800,000 a year to keep the four-bedded unit going. Um, I don't even like to think about it. We do mad things like bungee jumps, zip slides, parachute jumps, and people can get sponsorship for that. They can obviously give us a ring at the office and chat through any ideas that they might have. They can form their own group. We, we, we're crying out for people to sort of help us form a little group. We would never pressure anyone into, into doing a certain amount a year. We would just love to have those pockets of, of community support out there. Quite simply, if that support wasn't there, we couldn't continue to provide the service and 75 to 80 families a year would suffer because we would have to withdraw that service. 
I mean, people quite often say to me, oh, you know, you, you do a really good job, but really we couldn't do that job if it wasn't for the fundraisers and for the people in the community um, giving up their time really to raise money for the, the hospice. Um, so yes, please do it. Well, I'll say if it's just a pound or two that you can give to the Butterwick, any, any little helps, that'd be great. Dig deep and keep it all. Whatever you can give, please give it. It does make a difference. These children do need to have this facility. <laughs> Thank you.